D back for chapter 27 and 28 in Insignificant Events in the Life of a Cactus. I'm so excited to get to some really exciting parts in our book. We're going to be solving some mysteries here in the next few chapters and finding out what this is all about. So without further ado, chapter 27. I showed mom the picture that evening. She stared at it a long time before whispering, it could just be a coincidence. She didn't look like she believed her own words. She sat down at our little kitchen table without taking her eyes off the picture. She has your face, but it's in black and white. Maybe her hair is a different color. Don't you think it's strange though? I said. She nodded. Then she set the picture down. It must be a coincidence. I saw this show once about doppelgangers. What's that? I asked. Sounded dangerous and exciting. Just people who look alike. Oh, not that exciting. Anyway, she went on, there are people who look alike all over the world, like literally identical. But when they were DNA tested, they found out they weren't related at all, just totally random. That's weird, I said. I guess I found my doppeldinger. She smiled, doppelganger. I thought for a moment. I wonder if Henry knew this girl and that's why he keeps thinking I'm someone else. She looked from me to the picture and was about to say something when dad walked in. Mean Bob has officially left the building, he announced, and good riddance. What a relief, Mom said. She got up and handed Dad the picture. I even found this in the storage room. Dad stared at the picture a long time before looking at me. Odd, he said. You found it in that desk? No, none of those keys worked. We found it stuck in a book in a box. He didn't say anything more, but I did notice the way he and mom looked at each other and their faces weren't very happy. Hmm. It's kind of interesting that she found that picture that looks just like her, but with arms. And almost the more interesting thing is her parents' reaction to this. They seem to be very unsettled by the idea that there would be a picture of Avon locked away in storage somewhere on the site of Stagecoach Pass. Chapter 28. Zion's mom dropped him off at Stagecoach Pass early Saturday morning. And then mom took us to pick up Connor at his apartment. He was already outside his door when I walked up the concrete path. Hi, I said, meeting him in front of the apartment as he turned to lock the door. He struggled with the old lock. Hey. He followed me out to the car and peeked his head in the front window. Hi, Mrs. Green, he said before getting into the back seat with Zion. Hi, Connor, Mom said and pulled away from the curb. Are you excited for our little adventure? I know I am. Anything to get away from Stagecoach Pass right now and all the craziness of this festival planning? I seriously need a break from that place. Connor gave me a hesitant glance. Uh, even in Zion won't tell me where we're going. Well then, Mom said, I don't want to ruin the surprise. Connor seemed relaxed as we drove through Scottsdale. We spent most of the drive talking about Arizona and how we liked it here. I'd never seen a saguaro cactus until I moved here, I told them, thinking of the great saguaro at the top of my hill. Well, one that wasn't me anyway. That got us talking about down and dirty in Kansas City and the total lameness of desert moon over the desert again. It took us a long time to get to the movie theater. As we pulled up in front of it, Connor no longer looked relaxed. I knew he was angry. Avon, I told you, I don't ever want to go to the movies, he said, his eyes blinking rapidly, shoulders shrugging. Connor, just wait, I said. I'm not going in, he nearly shouted at me. Zion slumped down in his seat and stared at his lap. Calm down, Connor, Mom said gently. We have a special surprise for you. You don't have to worry about upsetting any other movie watchers. Connor huffed. Of course I do. I can't go to the movies. <laughs> yes, you can, Mom said. Don't you trust us? Connor glowered at me, his ticking increasing by the moment. Yes, but. But nothing, Mom said. Let's go in. We're seeing that new sci-fi movie you guys really wanted to see so badly. Connor threw his head back against the seat rest and ticked and huffed some more while mom parked the car. We got out and walked up to the ticket booth where mom quietly spoke with the cashier for a minute before buying four tickets to the movie. 
Connor barked a lot as we walked through the library lobby. It was early though, so only a few bystanders were around to gawk at him. People didn't seem to notice me at all when Connor was around. I felt bad for Connor, but I also enjoyed the feeling of being invisible. As we entered the theater, Mom said, It appears you have your pick of seats. The theater was completely empty. Connor looked at me and Zion. I smiled at him. Mom had to call a lot of theaters until she found one that was willing to let us have the whole theater to ourselves. Are you serious? said Connor. Well, said Mom, we couldn't afford to rent out the whole theater, so it was a lot to ask. But the manager here has a son with Tourette's and was really understanding. Plus, he said the morning show was usually fairly empty, so we were able to work it out. I could see the darkness lift off Connor like a blanket as his eyes lit up. And that alone made everything so worth it. For real, he said, we have the whole theater to ourselves? For real, Connor, said mom. Connor put an arm around mom's shoulders. Mrs. Green, you're the coolest. <laughs> I know, she said casually. Now you three go and find a seat. I'm going to sit way in the back where I like it. Can we get, go get some popcorn? Connor asked, and I knew he must have been incredibly happy to ask for food. Heck yeah, I said. I want some popcorn and some gummy bears. Gross, said Zion. You like those? Heck yeah, I said again as we walked out of the theater. I love squishy gummy candies. I love hot tamales too. My dad says I like them because they're red like my hair and hot like my temper. I laughed. Connor grinned. That's great to know. We'll try to stay on your good side. Who says you're on it? I narrowed my eyes at the two of them. I was just hoping we are. We, we were. Connor shrugged his shoulders and blinked, but it made me happy to see that, despite being out in public, his tics weren't completely out of control. I hoped that meant he was starting to feel a little more comfortable. I bet your parents want to see this movie, Zion, I said. Are you kidding? They went to the midnight showing on opening night. They waited in line for like four hours too. He rolled his eyes. And they wore costumes. Because it was so early, we didn't have to wait in line to get our snacks. Mom had given me some money that morning and I told Zion to reach his hand inside my purse and get it out. I also let the boys handle the transaction. It was kind of nice not having mom there, making me do everything. Zion paid for our popcorn, sodas, and gummy bears. $20 poorer, we headed back to the theater. Connor's and Zion's arms stuffed full of treats. Mine, not so much. I stopped at the bathroom on the way back so I could wash my feet since I knew I'd be dipping them in the popcorn. As we waited for the movie to start, the three of us surreptitiously glanced back at mom, sitting in the very back row. Do you think she might be hiding something from you? Connor said in a hushed voice. And why did she cover herself in napkins? I giggled. <laughs> it's warm enough outside to wear short sleeves, so she forgets to bring a sweater when we go places. And it's so cold inside from the AC. She calls the napkins her blankets. I rolled my eyes. It was even more embarrassing when my great grandma in Kansas used a flashlight to get around in the movie theater. She does it at restaurants too. At least here, no one can see her. Do you think she has any idea at all who that, that girl might be? And she's just not telling you? Connor asked. I looked back at her all covered in her blankets. A goofy smile on her face. No, I don't. She seemed totally surprised. My parents would tell me if they had any idea what was going on. She said it's probably just a coincidence. I told them about doppelgangers. I still don't buy it, Connor said. What are the odds that you would end up here at this park and find your doppelganger? Well, I said, I found this article online about these two guys who ended up sitting next to each other on a plane. They looked identical. And then there's that one movie star who everyone thinks is a vampire because there's a picture of a man who looks just like him from World War I. We lost interest in mom and plopped down in our seats. I know what happened. Connor suddenly declared, making Zion jump in his seat. There's a portal up on that hill. 
you go through the portal while you're wearing that necklace you found and go back in time to 1973. While you're there, you have your picture taken. Connor looked extremely proud of himself as he barked and said, oh, that's it. I've totally solved it. You could run into your grown-up self at any time, so you better be careful. Why do I need to be careful? I asked him. Is my grown-up self dangerous? Clearly, Connor said. He looked at Zion for confirmation. Zion nodded. Yeah, I'm pretty scared of grown-up Avon. Why wouldn't she just come and tell us all of this if she's wandering around somewhere? I mean, you'd remember us, wouldn't you? Zion asked me, like what we were talking about was actually true. Maybe she's dead, Connor said. I smiled at him. Rodeo clown, ma clown mafia? Totally, we giggled. I stuck a piece of popcorn in my mouth with my foot and chewed. I really love this whole theory, especially since this magical portal makes me grow arms. Connor's face fell. Oh yeah, I didn't think of that. You never know what a magical portal might do, Zion said, and Connor's smile returned. I decided to take advantage of Connor's good mood. So, are you coming to the festival or what? I asked him. I already told you. I know, I know, I said. Just thought I'd double check. Well, you can stop double checking, Connor said, because the only way I'd go into a crowd like that would be if someone, like, tied me up and dragged me there. Archie, <laughs> little puppy intervention. Zion grinned at Connor. Don't give her any ideas. Zion seemed to know me pretty well already. All right, so what do you guys think? Who is in that picture? Who could it be? Do you guys really think it's a doppelganger? Like someone who is your identical twin living somewhere else just as a coincidence? Do you think it's someone related to Avon? Do you think it's totally a random coincidence that's just someone that happens to look like her? What are your ideas about this? Also, think about how the mood uh, in this chapter changes. At the beginning, Connor was uh, pretty upset with Avon because he told her clearly that he can't go out in public and he can't go to movie theaters. And the minute he found out that his mom had found an open, empty movie theater for him, the mood completely shifted. And the whole rest of the chapter, the interactions between Avon and Zion and Connor are all quite happy and full of good feelings. Um, they joke to each other a lot about Avon being very dangerous and being afraid of grown-up Avon. Why do you think they say that? What about Avon's personality lets them joke about her being dangerous? All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed our chapters. See you next time.